market outlook. Um, so as we were saying, uh, we got we got a lot of hints that the market was ready to pull back. Uh, the beginning of last week, a couple weeks ago, whatever it was, when we kept making new highs in the market, but we weren't seeing it throughout the throughout you know the underlying stock action. We were noticing there's something like 60, 70 percent of, of stocks within the Nasdaq were trading under their 200-day moving average. Um, but yet Apple is continuously making a new high. That's a big enough company at this point to drive the whole market to gains. So we did get a lot of clues, and uh, I didn't really get hurt in the sell-off. We tried, you know, to be talking ad nauseum about how dangerous dangerous it is when leadership shrinks to only a few names. It usually precedes some sort of a market sell-off, or it's just showing that the underlying action isn't that great. Um, two weeks ago, I guess it was. Whatever it was, we were talking about how this time at highs, it kind of felt like we were at highs because all the breakouts were working. Then one week later, we kind of like backed up that stance in saying that, oh, now we're only seeing Apple and these other names make the new highs, which is a huge warning sign. And then Friday, that came to fruition. You know, the, the uh, news comes out about the uh, Omicron variant. I don't know if I'm saying that right or whatever it is. Uh, but, you know, the, the stock, stocks were telling us way before that news hit the tape that there were problems under the hood. And that was just a little excuse for stocks to sell off and puke on a little Thanksgiving Friday when no one's paying attention. It was actually the worst Thanksgiving Friday in history. Did you know that, Ben? I did, but I'm not surprised because it was pretty bleak out there. Yeah, well, I was eating leftovers, <laughs> sitting all cash, just having a great time myself. <laughs> what do you think about this market? You no, know, so definitely agree. I mean, um, you know, a few weeks ago, we, you know, things looked very good. You know, we saw a little bit of a warning shot, but we saw kind of across the board, especially on Friday, where we haven't really seen, you know, don't more sector-wise, you know, 3% down days across the board. We saw that in, you know, virtually every sector was down on Friday, except for biotechs, which like eked out like a very tiny gain. And we're starting to see, um, like if we're looking at, you know, the S&P, you know, we had this little flag near highs that finally, you know, it broke that support area, which we don't want to see. We see this with the consumer discretionaries that now there's like 340 areas, the new area support. And we saw this kind of, you know, in a lot of other sectors in the energy sector, all these sectors are basically just breaking support. And the last quarter, we haven't really seen that. And now this is the first time we're starting to see support break. We may want to avoid some of those support buybacks until we have real confirmation. And just, you know, looking back even at like just the overall market, We've had a couple periods, you know, even kind of September, October, we had like kind of that month of just kind of choppy trading as we kind of pulled in yep. for that, that, that last leg. That was kind of just a month of difficult trading. We saw that in March, we had about a, a month where it was a little wishy-washy. And then going back to last September and November, that kind of quarter that we had a few little corrections that most kind of forget about. But my point is here is that we're getting these like very small pockets of just difficult trading. And maybe we're in this next two to four weeks where it's not the best, where if we can just sit in cash and be patient, it's much easier to do that and just let things wash out and reset than trying to battle with the market every day, trying to find some opportunities when it really is, you know, slim pickings out there, I think right now. I think just kind of doing less and just being patient is probably the best move than trying to force things when they're just not really presenting themselves no, you know, at this yeah. time. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And, and, you know, it's as simple as this. I got the S&P chart up and I'm I'm circling that like September to October range, it's like difficult trading. Then with that October, November run, it's like easy trading. And now we're getting into a little section of probably difficult trading. We don't have to chase every move. Early in my career, I thought I had to put risk on every day. I thought I had to find the one winner in the market. I have completely backed away from that, you know, wholeheartedly just to wait for the easy times. And I've seen, you know, it, it do wonders for my account, just not, and my, my mental capital, just not trying to be involved like I, I felt no reason to trade today. I, I, I was seeing you know nothing out there we're gapping up one percent yeah stocks made moves there's always opportunity in the stock market always things moving around but you know we, we want to stick around for the easiest opportunities the most high risk reward situations where we're seeing uh, sectors break out in mass and we're just not really seeing that we're seeing you know as you said slim picking so definitely a good time to chill uh, I think that this week will be very random and very difficult. You know, we were talking about it today at the end of the day in the chat, and you know, everyone, everyone kind of collectively decided that we were gapping down tomorrow. It's like, well, why? You know, the the market's goal is to frustrate the maximum amount of participants. We could absolutely gap and go to the upside tomorrow, but who cares if, if you know if your your setups aren't there, you're not working. So um, the need to be involved in every move is is just you know only going to hurt you over the long term. So uh, definitely glad you brought up that point about easy trading and tough trading because this 
This, if you looked at the last five days in the S&P, make a new high, pull back, then we do a little pivot, then we had a little green day, then we sell off, then we rally today. That's difficult trading, you know, that's just very mm -hmm. difficult trading. There's no way around that. Uh, it's just very random action. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see us become, you know, more of a range-bound market between this, you know, SPY 450-ish, 455-ish, and those highs we just made 470. If we just flagged out here for the next few weeks, I mean, that would be healthy action. So, uh, mm -hmm. definitely uh, uh, more risk off for the time being. Most cash I've had in months, and honestly, no problem with the accounts in the highs.